This man's name is Mavi, a poor young man who works as a cake delivery courier in St. Petersburg, Russia. That morning, as usual, Mavi was delivering cake orders to restaurants, but the road was temporarily closed because a nobleman passed by. While waiting for it, he accidentally saw the noble family symbol on the horse carriage door. After the road was finally opened, Mavi continued his journey to the restaurant, but due to the road closure earlier, he was late delivering the cake. Even though he tried to explain to the restaurant owner, Without the slightest pity at that very second, he was immediately fired. Frustrated, Mavi decided to go home. In the middle of the road, he saw a man drop a watch. Mavi then chased the man and returned his watch. After Mavi catch up with the man, he immediately returned the watch. They both got to know each other. The man's name is Alex. He was confused about how Mavi caught up with him because he was skating very fast earlier, because he was amazed by how Mavi skied. Alex asked him to meet again that night in the middle of the frozen lake. In another place, in a luxurious noble palace, a girl named Elisa was learning manners with her teacher. After they finished studying, the two of them then had lunch with the family. While Elisa was eating, she asked her father's permission to study science too besides learning manners because she wanted to enroll in the university, but her father immediately forbade her. During that time, most Russians still believe in myths and witchcraft, so only a few people had the desire to learn about science. Elisa couldn't do anything but kept silent, not only because of her overprotective father, but also because of her stepmother, whom his father married after she lost her real mother. She seemed to want to get rid of her all the time. That night, Mavi accompanied his father to work, turning on all the lights on the city streets. After work on their way home, Mavi was worried about his father's worsening health condition. On the other hand, in the palace, Elisa was seen secretly studying biology by dissecting a frog. Soon, her personal maid came in while carrying two candles. The maid told her a myth that said if someone asks for a soulmate in front of a pair of candles and a mirror, then the mirror will definitely show their soulmate. But Elisa said that she believed in science more than just a mere myth. Meanwhile at home, after his father slept, the curious Mavi decided to see Alex at the appointed place. Arriving at the location, it turned out that Alex was not alone but with his friends. Alex told the truth that they were all a group of resistance movements. They were not ordinary thieves because they only stole from rich people. Alex explained that back then, for centuries, the rich enslaved the poor to build palaces and magnificent buildings without paying them, so what they did was not steal, but take the rights of their ancestors. Hearing the explanation just now, Mavi was amazed. In the middle of the chat, Mavi saw the same symbol of the noble family at the gate of one of the palaces with the symbol on the horse-drawn carriage this morning, and because the noble family was the reason he was fired, Alex asked him to repay them for their actions. When they arrived at the palace's terrace, Alex told Mavi to climb up the balcony and deface the noble family symbol. Meanwhile, inside the room, Elisa was about to go to bed after she finished her lesson. She then remembered what her maid just told her about asking the mirror who was her soulmate. When she did that, Mavi's reflection coincidentally appeared in the mirror. Elisa was shocked to see that and immediately went to the balcony to check. When the two of them met, Elisa was so surprised she accidentally burned Mavi's clothes. Mavi and the others managed to escape. In the middle of the road, Alex offered if Mavi wanted to join his group and asked him to come to the Winter Celebration Festival if he wanted to. Since Mavi was also fed up with the arrogance of the rich people, he decided to join. In the morning, Elisa's maid wondered when it happened to Elisa that made her smile the whole morning. Elisa said last night's story was she saw her soulmate, while on the other side, Alex's group started teaching Mavi how to pickpocket properly and correctly. Day by day, Mavi continued to practice. Every time he succeeded in stealing, the stolen goods would be immediately given to a collector who would resell the stolen goods until finally, Alex decided that Mavi was ready for action. That night at Mavi's house, his father asked why he often went out even though he was unemployed. Mavi answered that he was on business with his friends. He had to lie because he didn't want his father to worry. Since his mother died, it was his father who had always looked after him. The next day at the police station, Elisa's father was holding a meeting. He was the chief officer there. At the meeting, he and the other police were fed up with so many cases of theft. One of the police from the security department named Arkady explained that the police had a hard time catching the thieves because they were wearing skating shoes. Arkady suggested they practice skating as well and formed a special police team. That suggestion won his heart and decided to accept it immediately. He also thought that Arkady was the right man to be the bride for his beloved daughter, Elisa. On the other hand, Mavi started his action. The action was done effortlessly, and they went straight to their headquarters in a large shipwreck, after they finished their mission. While counting the loot, they found an invitation letter for an ice skating party in the royal palace, and because the party must be full of rich people, Alex decided that they would do their next theft there and started making plans, but unfortunately, 
The invitation could only be for two people, and because it was Maffy who stole the invitation, so Alex decided to take Maffy with him. Meanwhile, at home, Elisa's father was having a party. He invited all of his fellow nobles and the police chiefs, including Arkady. When he first saw Elisa, he immediately fell in love with her. He couldn't take his eyes off her throughout the party. He even asked for permission from Elisa's father to accompany Elisa to the party at the royal palace later. Her father, who felt that the two of them were compatible, agreed with that. At dawn, Mappy woke up to hear the sound of his father's coughing. The condition kept worsening and his father started coughing blood. Seeing that, Maffy decided to take his father to the nearest doctor. Sadly, after the examination, the doctor said that his father wouldn't survive much longer with his sickness, and the only hospital that could treat his father's illness was located in Germany, which is very far away and moreover, the costs were also very expensive. Three days later, Matvi and Elisa were seen getting ready to attend the party. Arriving at the party, Matvi and Alex immediately went into action. After the show ended, Arkady asked Elisa to dance. In that romantic moment, they chatted at length, and because he couldn't hold back his feelings anymore, Arkady proposed to her. Hearing the proposal just now made her shocked because they just met. In the middle of the conversation, suddenly, a waiter approached and reported that lots of visitors' belongings at the party went missing, including the host's valuables. After Arkady left when Elisa was alone, Matvi suddenly showed up. He apologized for infiltrating the balcony of Elisa's room without permission. He tried to find a reason, but Elisa had found out that he was a thief. Elisa then made an irresistible agreement for Maffy to take her to the university in the city at exactly 12 the next day. Inevitably, Maffy agreed to do that. After returning from the party, Alex and his friends went to the bar to celebrate their success. After the party that night, Maffy came home drunk and gave a lot of money. His father, who saw his son drunk for the first time, felt that his business was not right. He refused to accept the money and told his son to repent his sins, but instead of listening to what his father said, Maffy replied that God doesn't exist. He said that he could just leave if his father didn't want to accept his money. He had a lot of money and wouldn't need his father's old skates again. The next morning, when the special police force of Arkady was practicing, Elisa's father came to check. Arkady reported that his troops were ready to patrol very soon. In the afternoon, Maffy prepared to meet Elisa to keep his promise. On the other hand, Elisa pretended to be sick to be allowed to skip her class. When the teacher was away, she immediately swapped positions with the maid and sneaked out secretly. After arriving at the location, Elisa explained to Maffy that she wanted to register for the university entrance tests so she could study in France. Sadly, at that time, women were forbidden to study unless they got permission from their father or husband, so she wanted Maffy to pretend to be her husband and gave the permission for her to study. Elisa then entered the registration room where she intelligently explained to the judges about chemical formulas. The professors were amazed and decided to accept her, but before being officially admitted, Elisa had to show proof of a permit from her husband. When Maffy came in, unfortunately, it turned out that he could not read or write, so a statement could not be made. When the professor asked several questions, their answers were different from each other. Until finally, they were caught lying and Elisa's registration was rejected. Outside, Elisa was really annoyed. She almost had it on her hands, if not because of the questions from the professors. Before leaving as a thank you, Elisa gave something to repay Maffy, but he refused to accept it. Elisa was confused why a thief refused such a valuable thing. Mavi then explained that he was not thieves. He revealed that the nobles, including Elisa's family, were worse than him. Back in the day, they were exploiting thousands of poor to build the city. Elisa, who also studied history, admitted that what he said was right. When they arrived at the front gate of Elisa's house, Mavi returned the payment from Elisa and said that if Elisa really wanted to pay, he invited her to go on a date with him tonight. Smiling shyly, Elisa accepted the invitation. That night, as a Christmas present, Elisa's stepmother gave her father a gift, an imported car from Europe. The gift left him amazed to see a new kind of transportation system. He was very happy and his love for her became even greater. Elisa was annoying to see that. Even more when her stepmother gave her a cage to put her rabbit pet just to offend her, but she kept her smile in front of her father. When father and stepmother went for a ride using the car, Mavi sneaked in. Seeing Mavi, Alish's sadness suddenly went away. Mavi said that he has a Christmas present for Elisa. The present was a beautiful night. He took Elisa to the city to enjoy the night skating and partying with the townsfolks. They also met Alex and his groups. At the bar after the party, Alex and Elisa argued over their ideology understanding. Alex explained at length how bad the ideology of the country, just like the first time he explained it to Mavi. Alex even gave a history book to Elisa as a Christmas gift from him. In the middle of a chat, one of the main fly flirted with Elisa and made Mavi irritated. He asked him to apologize, but they ended up fighting. In the end, Alex raided them. 
When Mavi took Elisa home, at the door of Elisa's room, Elisa said that Mavi's Christmas present was the most beautiful gift in her life. Before parting, the two of them kissed. Days later, Alex and his friends were about to do another theft when they witnessed a rich man shouting in the middle of the street, saying that he had a lot of money in his pocket. Seeing that, Alex and his group jumped into action, but from the top of the bridge, when Alex observed the surroundings, he felt like something was strange. Alex then realized that it must be a trap, but when he was about to tell his friends, he was too late. Flies moved and was caught. His hands were chained cuffed. Shortly after, the special police force appeared in ambush, and because they had been cornered, Alex ordered the others to run away before they were caught too. At that moment, even after what happened between them the night before, Mavi still couldn't leave Fly and decided to help. They both managed to escape. Fly then ordered to split up, but before parting ways, he thanked Mavi for what he had done. When Mavi was alone and wanted to return to the hideout, Arkady appeared and tried to arrest him. <laughs> Seeing Mavi in distress, Alex helped him and desperately had to use a gun. As a result of the shot, Arkady's leg was seriously injured. After the incident, Mavi, who had not come home for a long time, decided to go home to meet his father, but when he greeted the man that was lighting the streetlights, the officer turned out to be not his father. He then found out that his father had died. In a dark and quiet house, Mavi sits alone reminiscing the old days when his father was still alive. It was his father who taught him how to skate. He then went to his father's grave. There, he remembered the last words of his father for him to stop doing illegal business and repent for his sins. After making up his mind, Mavi went to the hideout to meet Alex and the others. There, he told them that he wanted to stop stealing. Mavi also returned all the stolen money that he had been saving up. They knew that it was Mavi's promise to his father and respected it. On the other hand, Elisa's family was seen having a party and even though his leg was still injured, Arkady still insisted on coming to meet Elisa. They were having a magic show, and the magician was an acquaintance of Elisa's stepmother. The magician explained that he wanted to read the future of the audience and then asked Elisa's stepmother to choose two people to go on the stage. She then chose Elisa and Arkady. The moment Elisa heard her name called, she knew that this was all just a set to match her up with Arkady. On the stage, the magician said that if both of them were meant to be, then his hands would be burned by the fire. When the magician put his hands into the container, he said that he didn't feel the heat at all. All the audience was amazed to see the magic, except for Eliza. She was fed up with all that and suddenly unraveled the trick. She told people that this was just a chemical substance reaction that made the fire not burn the skin. As soon as she said that, the audience started wondering whether they had been lied to by the magic shows they had been watching. Feeling embarrassed, Elisa's father and stepmother decided to disband the show and left. After the event was disbanded, Elisa's father entered her room without knocking on the door first. Inside, he was shocked to see his daughter reading a book given to her by Alex. Not only that, her father thought that she became like that because of the sciences that she learned. He then ordered the maids to burn down all of Elisa's books and everything about science. He also fired Elisa's personal maid and teacher. Seeing her world being destroyed right in front of her eyes, Elisa could only remain silent even though her heart was broken. When everyone left, her teacher met her to say goodbye before she left. Just like any other teacher, she gave one last lesson to her students. Her teacher told me that all this time she has spent her life swimming in a very long river of life without ever daring to go against the current. She told her not to be like her. She wanted Elisa to reach her goals and the only way to reach it is to go against the current. After the teacher left, in the middle of the night, when everyone was sleeping, Elisa decided to run away. Unfortunately, the gate of the house turned out to be locked and because she had no other choice, she took her father's new car to break through the locked gate and went to the bar where Alex's girlfriend worked. She then met her and asked to be taken to the hideout. Meanwhile, at the hideout, Alex looked panicked because one of their members, the Collector, hadn't returned after the ambush that day. They were afraid that he was caught. Shortly after, Elisa showed up. She brought with her a box full of jewels that she intended to sell to get the tickets to leave for France. She invited Maffy to run away with her. She also said that if they sold the jewelry, they would get a lot of money and it could help with his father's treatment. She then asked about Mavi's father, but when she saw his face, she realized that everything was too late. In the room, Mavi told Elisa to rest before leaving for the station tomorrow, but when he wanted to leave, Elisa asked him to accompany her. When the two of them were making out, they suddenly heard Arkady's voice shouting from outside. Turned out, he and the other police forces had surrounded their base. They threatened to burn down the place if they refused to surrender. Upon hearing the threat, everyone panicked, and after the 30-second count ended, the police started burning the hideout from outside. In the middle of the panic, Alex got an idea to make Elisa a hostage. Maffy, who didn't agree, then took her upstairs. 
At that moment, Alex ordered Fly and the others to save themselves first while he was going to chase Maffy. When they left, the police immediately arrested them and beat them up. Among the police, there was also the collector. It turns out that during the ambush, he was caught and tortured to tell the location of the hideout. When Alex managed to chase Maffy, he pushed Maffy and made him fall. He then took Elisa hostage and shouted at the police to make an exchange to release his friends so then he would release Elisa. Seeing Elisa in danger, Arkady immediately agreed. Before letting go of Elisa, Alex asked them to guarantee they were not going to lie, but Arkady there just answered that he couldn't give any guarantee, but as a knight, he swore that he would never break his promise. Alex was convinced and decided to lower Elisa from the boat using a rope. While Elisa was getting off, Alex's friends were also released, but suddenly, the rope that hold Elisa was burned down. Fortunately, Mavi caught the rope on time so Elisa could get to the bottom safely. On the boat, when Mavi and Alex saw the others escaping, they realized that Arkady lied to them. He broke his oath and killed Alex's friends. It was only the two of them left. While holding back his sadness, Alex told Mavi to jump into the frozen lake to escape and he would be following him from the back. Before jumping, Mavi asked Alex not to lie, but when Mavi jumped, Alex didn't jump with him. As a captain, he chose to protect his last friend and divert the attention of the police so they didn't see Mavi. When they arrived at Elisa's house, Arkady begged Elisa's father to forgive his daughter's misbehavior. Meanwhile, at the hospital, a fisherman carried a man whom he found dying on the edge of the lake. When the doctor examined the man, it turned out to be Maffy. The doctor did everything he could, but Maffy finally died. Moments later, a miracle happened. Maffy came back from the dead. The doctor who examined him said that this was a new miracle. When the doctor left, Maffy chased and thanked him for saving his life. On the other hand, at the police station, Arkady reported that he had succeeded in killing Alex's entire gang. The next day, Elisa's father, stepmother, and Arkady were seen together. When Elisa enters, her stepmother informed her that Arkady's purpose to come was to propose to Elisa, and because both parents have agreed and because she thought that Matthew was dead, Elisa has no other choice but to accept Arkady's proposal. The next night, from a distance, Matthew continued to monitor the situation at Elisa's house, while inside, Elisa and her family were getting ready to attend the New Year's party at the Royal Palace. When Elisa's car comes out, Matthew immediately followed. This time, he returned to wearing his father's old skating shoes. Arriving at the party despite the lively vibe, Elisa was depressed ever since she heard the news of Matthew's death. Meanwhile, on the outside after outwitting the guard, Matthew secretly sneaked in and then disguises himself as a waiter. At the party, when the guests were dancing, Elisa was sick of the crowd and asked Arkady's permission to go out to calm her mind. Outside the hall, while daydreaming and looking at the candles and the mirror, the same as before, Elisa sees her soulmate, Matthew. She was so happy and surprised to see him still alive. Without wasting more time, Mavi asked Elisa to run away with him while showing her two train tickets to France. But suddenly, a guard reprimanded and told Mavi to go back to work. He was surprised and accidentally dropped one of his tickets. In the last seconds before the new year, Arkady was confused because Elisa still hadn't come back. When she asked the guard, the guard reported that he earlier saw Elisa chatting in front of a mirror with a man. When Arkady checked, he found there was a train ticket to France that fell from Mavi's pocket. He then rushed outside to see but Mavi and Elisa had managed to escape. Mavi and Elisa then put on their skating shoes and went to the station. Arriving at the station, when they were about to take the train, Mavi was confused to find only one ticket. The officer told him to hurry up and buy a new ticket at the counter because the train was about to depart. Amid the panic, he saw Arkady coming towards them while holding the other ticket he was looking for. Mavi then told Elisa to get on the train first and promised to catch up with Elisa on time. He then fought Arkady to get the ticket back. As soon as he managed to get the ticket, he ran to catch the train and managed to jump onto it. But he was shot right in his chest by Arkady. Strangely, there was no blood at all. When he checked, it turned out that the bullet had hit the skating shoes he was pocketing. Mavi was so touched that the old skating shoes his father gave him had somehow saved his life. A few years later, an old man who turned out to be one of the professors who was the judge when Elisa took the university entrance exam was seen. That afternoon, Elisa's father came to the professor's office and asked for the news about his daughter. The professor told him that Elisa had graduated from college in France and got lots of job offers to teach at various famous universities in Europe. Hearing the news just now, Elisa's father, who miss already missed her so much, asked the professor to call Elisa home. 
He said that he would not ban Elisa again as long as his daughter wanted to go back to Russia and teach there. Sometime later, after returning to Russia, Elisa had become a lecturer. While teaching her class, her father secretly entered the classroom and witnessed how her little daughter had now grown into a great woman. Since the presence of Elisa, all students were happy to learn, even Elisa's class was the most favorite class at the university. Hearing this story, Elisa's father was even more proud. In the afternoon, Elisa was seen at the park with his husband, Matthew. He was teaching his son how to skate, the same as before when his father taught him. 